Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. Got me a bicycle wheel Murray push mower here. I haven't had one of these in a good little while. This one's in pretty good shape overall from what I can tell. It has one interesting feature that I have not gotten on a lawnmower, on a Briggs & Stratton Quantum specifically um, in my time. Very good shape. Let me tell you the backstory behind this. So this one came with this one. This one's in running condition. It just didn't have an air filter on it. I think it's a little low on compression. You have to prime it in order for it to start every time, even when warm. But it's good. It's ready to go. I got these two push mowers in a trade for the John Deere JS63, which is the third time I've sold that thing. The first time I sold it, the brake cable broke on it um, but I got a riding mower trade off of it second time I sold it apparently it wasn't running after it got hot I don't know if it was a coil issue or if it was just they were just trying to cut fields with it or something I could never duplicate the problem got it back on a trade he traded up to a riding lawnmower so that thing's been around the block <laughs> It's definitely made its money, so to speak. Um, the guy who bought it gave me $50 plus these two mowers for it because I just wanted it gone. Anyways, something I have never ever seen on one of these Quantums before. An external primer bulb. Really cool. The thing is, the guy didn't leave me the um, carburetor, which I said it ain't a big deal. I wish I could save this. It would be really cool to have one of these external primers, but it's just not really practical for me to save as I have a backing plate with a primer bulb that's ready to rock and roll on this thing as it is um, that I got here at the house. Um, slap another carburetor on it. We're going to call it a day. I've already checked it. It will fire. has good spark. Your date code is a 124702, that's the model number of the engine. Your year, 9204, April 11th, I have my dad's birthday. Uh, obviously he was born a lot later than 92, or a lot earlier than 92, but 411. How about that? Kind of cool. Got a throttle cable on it. I, get, I presume it works. Or we might just take it off. Yeah, I think that throttle is frozen, but that cable doesn't work, so we might just take the cable off of it and let it run like a standard throttle like all the others that we get. Oh, that kind of works. Not very well, though. Yeah, it's broken up at the top, so we'll just take that off and let it run at a set throttle. Um, that's easy to do. So, let's get to work. Most of it's just going to be putting a carburetor on it. And, uh, fuel line. Oil is, looks like it's brand new, so I'm not even going to touch the oil. Let's look under the mower real quick. Uh, blade I can salvage. So I'm not worried about that. Got one of the universal blades on it though so i might pick that off and put on one that only has a little hole in the middle but i'll put all these items right here might put them on a little red thing get my batteries out of the way we'll get this thing up on here and we will uh go ahead and change the carburetor out on it all right we're gonna put this thing to get it back functional um i will take this throttle cable off like i mentioned this push primer here I think you find them on a lot of snowblower applications for like an external primer. Um, what happens is there's like a little nipple inside there that attached to this old rotted wore out hose that I'm going to toss. And somehow I don't have the carburetor and I've never seen this set up before. So it must somehow attach into the carburetor and allow air to prime into it in order to get it going. I'm going to convert it to one of these type backing plates with this primer bulb set up on it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I have all of the necessary parts to change everything over on it. 
with, which we will get started with right now. So I'm going to take off the old O-ring, because I've got one with the new card kit, and we'll put this new, new carburetor on, it's just the typical 798, excuse me, 799868, here's all your other numbers if you are even remotely interested. Basically all the same carburetor. Usually there are supposed to be some shoulder bolts that go with this um, to bolt it into, because they have a little bit of a shoulder instead of just threads on them. Uh, I've used these type bolts before and they're fine, but they're not the OEM factory, so to speak. So next, Almost all the carburetors you get are going to come with this little external kit. We're going to put this O-ring on there, and then the gasket will go to the um, to the backing plate for the air filter. We'll put that on there. We're going to double that gasket up to ensure uh, to ensure that we have good priming action. So, I feel like I just lost a bolt, but I think I just it just went down a little bit. So we're going to pop this in here. Hopefully I'm out of the way. First, though, we're going to take our linkage and pop the linkage in right here. Put the carburetor in. We'll screw on both sides and attach it with the 3 8 Sometimes it's hard to get these bolts lined up. Got a nice little quarter inch ratchet extension out of it, so. Made a few cents off of that. So I'm just going to screw these in after you put your O-ring in. Only thing is, if you don't have one of these one of these bolt proper bolts with the shoulders, you have to be really careful when you tighten them. You don't want to over tighten them and strip the threads going into them. Oops. We're going to cut the fuel line to length after. After we got all this on. Okay. And that's more than good. So, I have a little box of goodies here. Came with another lawnmower I got on trade. The guy attempted to fix and ended up getting a different type of carburetor, but still kind of works. I need the primer bulb, so primer bulb. Um, I thought I had another gasket in there. I may be going crazy, though. Take the backing plate now. We're going to put a gasket, a new gasket. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to double it up. Get some of that old gasket off there. We'll double it up, let it seal up well. Your most important part is right here, because that's where the air goes for the primer. Just grabbing the second gasket here real quick. A 
I've got gaskets for days when it comes to these quantums. Sometimes you use like two or three of them and they'll get you what you need. Usually, especially on these older applications, I'll go ahead and always double them up because it doesn't hurt anything. All the quantum engines are kind of getting old now because they stopped making them in what, 2013? So then even the newest ones are about seven, seven, eight years old now. They may have made them on Toros a little bit longer. That'll, that'll go in when we put the backing plate on. Um, let me get the screwdriver. I think I mentioned this in the other videos. They make special tools to get this primer bulb out. But obviously I do not have them or I would be using them. This one's got a bunch of dirt in particular in there. We're going to pop that tab off the bottom there on the two sides and that gets you loose. And you can just kind of wiggle it up with the screwdriver out. Nine times out of ten, these new bulbs will come with a new plastic holder. So you can just, and I worked on this years and years ago, and I actually put one of the quantum type, or the classic type primer bulbs in there. So we're going to put the correct one in there now. Back in place, just a little dirty. When you do this, you just have to be extremely careful to slide them and lock them without messing up your plastic mount. Feel a good push of air coming out of it. That's good. All right. So now, before I move on, I'm going to cut my fuel line to length. have a big enough workspace apparently. So basically right there where the where this fuel where I put the that out. Uh, there was water or there was some water in the gas tank. I just drained the tank out. I'll fill it up with some fresh gas. Again since this doesn't take too long I'm going to show the process from start to finish. I'm just cutting the fuel line to length for now. Almost run out of supplies, honestly. Any fuel line, air filters. And, um, I need something else. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Pull right. I need pull right too. Okay, that's on. Let's put this backing plate on now. Should just slide on like so. What we might have to do is take. I'm going to take this off with a five sixteenths. Take this off with the 5 sixteenths just so it's not in the way. Like I said, we're going to get rid of the throttle application. Which I'll go ahead and do now just to eliminate that.
That'll work. Remember what we're working with here. We're not working with anything crazy. Just need it functional and uh, we'll be good. So, aha, so this setup is a little bit different. Oh man, so I've encountered a little discrepancy here that's going to throw me a little bit of a roadblock. This, the way this mounts is slightly different. I don't know if I can show you or not. Because the primer bulb is kind of getting in the way of backing plate. Alrighty y'all, I found a maybe not so nifty solution to it. So really the only blockage I had was this plate right here that has the third, I guess the third screw so to speak, to mount it onto. I had just had to pull that back and like I said I pulled it back Probably gonna pull it back to wedge the throttle in the full throttle position, to be honest with you. But the only disadvantage to that is it only gets mounted here on these two areas. But look, when I push in the primer bulb, we're priming. So that's the goal. And that right there is perfect. It's wedged on the throttle. We don't have any choke action going on on this one because of the primer bulb situation. So let me uh, take the throttle cable off. Let me just clean up my, me my mesh real quick. I have an air filter for it right here. Um, put on the um, cover and I'll get it off I've got some gas in it, obviously. And uh, let's see how this thing runs. These old five horsepowers are really quiet usually. So as long as I've got the throttle, the throttle deal hooked up right, we'll have a good lawnmower right here. People love these bicycle wheel Murrays. They love them. This is by far one of the best condition ones I've received. Even the wheels are tight. Usually you get them and the wheels are just all, especially the front wheels, are just so much play in them and whatnot. But bicycle back wheels are the ticket. We've got a little bit of weather trying to move into the area, so I'm going to start it here in the garage.
So the uh, the updated primer bulb is working. Obviously, it's running. Um, two small things I need to do before I wash it, and I'll show you the final product. The first is this. This bolt right here, which I guess is more like a, pardon the thunder if y'all can hear that on camera, I'm trying to watch out for anything, but so this must be like a rivet type deal here, from what I can tell, and it looks like the rivet itself has been punched out of it. And uh, just I just need to tack weld that back in place. Um, and the other thing is I just need to sharpen the blade, which barely, barely needs sharpening. And I might, since this is a universal one, I might find one that will only fit a Murray with just like one hole in the middle and use it on here. So that way I can use it on another, another mower with a 22 inch deck uh, that is more picky about what blade it takes. So I'm going to do a little bit of sourcing on that. Do those two small things. I'll give it a good wash. And I will catch y'all um, for the final look. Alright, so here's the finished product. Again, this was a fairly easy fix. Uh, just had to put a carburetor on it. New air filter. Sharpened blade. And we're good to go. Give it a nice little cleanup as well. Um, the bicycle wheels actually still have a little bit of shine to them. This, you can tell this thing was taken care of and probably placed indoors for probably its entire life, honestly. So I just want to give you a look on the tripod. We'll give a walk around here now. Um, again, very good overall. This discharge chute is a little bit up a little bit but that's not really going to to matter um the spring is off of it i might try and see if i can get the spring back on it just to just so that it it will stay up but i don't want to knock off the little ends of the discharge chute just for that i did weld it back on so it is going to stay in place um Look at this side, the wheel or the paint really hasn't even started coming off of that wheel. Of course I could paint the wheels white or black if I were Jason Pate. But um I guess I'm just not. <laughs> no real reason. But um again, seventy dollars probably is what I'll list it for. So these these wheels are actually fairly desirable still, um, especially a lot of older folks and really who have had these over the years really enjoy them. Let me grab my little arm and we'll cold start it, make sure it runs before we list it.
starting on the first pull, running great. I just need to bump the throttle down. Remember, I had to do a little bit of rigging with the throttle and whatnot since the cable was bad. Um, I just kind of made it fixed and it's wedged up against this tab that I pulled out so that I could accommodate this new primer bulb setup, which works great. Um, I wish I could have fixed that primer bulb setup, but just not very practical since I had the uh, items at home that I needed to do that with. Um, everything looks good otherwise, though. And it seems to run good. I'll list it for 70 It'll probably sell for 60 The old Murrays don't bring a lot of money, but somebody who appreciates the bicycle wheels will enjoy this one. So thank y'all for watching. As you see, I've had mower projects on mower projects that's carrying us into 2021. For my videos, we'll get started on the 2021 season here pretty soon. So keep on watching. Um, I'll have videos every Wednesday and Sunday uh, at 8 p.m. until I run out. <laughs> so thank y'all again. I appreciate all the support. And... Uh, Y'all just watching all the mowers I've fixed over the course of uh, the year here. So, I appreciate it. You can catch me at Ellis Mowers 9 on Instagram and Facebook for any additional items that I may be working on. And I will catch y'all right here on the next YouTube video. See you then.